Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Tech Talks. This week, we're going over Hammond B3X. We're going to be going through some um, examples for anybody who hasn't seen it. We're going to go through all the different features. And for those of you guys who already have it, we're going to check out a bunch of different things like uh, DAW use, routing the different manuals to different MIDI channels, and controlling um, all the different parameters in the settings menu. So let's go ahead and jump right into the program. Uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe. And um, take this time, if you haven't already, to make an IK Multimedia account. We're going to be giving away Hammond B3X at the end of this video so stay tuned to the very end all we're going to do is ask an opinion based question and then that's it from there so um, your usernames your ticket in and um yeah let's jump in into hammond b3x which is by the way the first officially licensed uh, b3 virtual instrument out there uh, we're going to start with our daw setup so we're going to jump in here and look at the audio tab and look over here to the aco section we have our driver type um, for windows make sure you use if you're using um, MME, it's probably not going to deliver the best results. That's really for video games and other stuff um, like movies. Uh, ACO is going to be what you want for real-time audio processing, right? And I'm going to pick a 256 buffer, so not too high, not too low. Uh, if you hear clicks and pops, just raise that guy up. And if you hear latency, drop it down and see what your, your system can handle. Um, every system can handle different limits. Uh, I like to stay at a 48K sample rate because I don't necessarily need to go to 96K, and that does spare me some um, processing power when it comes to the, um, virtual instruments. So let's take a look at our MIDI tab. We have our Keys IO 25 here, and you can see um, it's just set up to be on the track option, which is really cool, and that's just going to let me control everything on my track, like Hem B3X. So if you look, all I've done here is drag our VST straight over to this track and I've left a couple of MIDI tracks for later. You can see the bass, um, bass sound here and let's go ahead and play just a quick sound and I'll show you a couple of different things here. Cool, so if you look at the screen you're going to see a bunch of draw bars here, the upper, the lower, and the pedals and that's going to change the different timbre of what you're going to hear and these inverted keys on the left hand side are made different presets for those draw bars so i'm only controlling the top but i've preset my my um, pads up here to change through the presets let's hear what they sound like all right i like that one so that's our rock preset and then you can see our flutes here you can also just click them Very cool sounds, very quick and nice and easy. Um, then you have some other e expressive controls over here, like the um, the normal and soft volumes. Let's go ahead and switch to our all draw bars again and just click some of these buttons. You can hear that one immediately. And another one you can hear immediately is the percussion, which is gonna be this draw bar, right? So let's turn that on. Right, so let's change the volume of this and notice it doesn't quite do anything. Cool, so that's that's where that sound comes from and that's how a B3 really works. And by the way, that's actually how the whole program's set up. It's supposed to react like a real B3, so all the tone wheels are simultaneously spinning like they would and they're organized in the same way that they would to affect tuning on a real B3. So. Let's jump to this next one. Um, we have the percussion loud and soft. Let's hear it loud. Very different sound there. Then let's go fast and slow decay. Okay, a little different. And let's try second and third. We'll go with the, um, the slow decay. Okay, cool. So little variations you have up here then you have the vibrato on the swell manual and vibrato on the great manual and then you have the different controls for the vibrato and the chorus and these are going to be different um this is going to be our vibrato for this manual now if you notice essentially v3 and c3 are going to be the most intense and c2 and v2 c1 v1 are going to be very um less so so check it out So one is very subtle. All right, so you've gotten this whole panel overview, and then you can see we have additional controls and advanced. Let's check out our control page. You're gonna see the exact same thing, just a nice, easier way to see it. You can see all of your presets here, and if you do change these, um, you're gonna reflect on those little menus, so you're gonna be able to quickly see everything that you're doing. 
And as you switch between your draw bars, that's going to be the inverted keys. So if you don't need to see your keyboard as you're performing, switch to the control page. It's super easy to do. And the next thing you can see here is going to be our program changes, which what I've done here is I've set it up on my keys IO to just change with um, this nice little button. And that's actually the automatic setup for this guy. So check this out. All I need to do is press a little button and I'm switching through a bunch of presets. So let's actually, let's check out that, that Booker preset. Where did you go? Okay, cool. So that's a nice little, little sound there. Um, you can hear it sounds kind of like some Booker T stuff. Um, with the MGs, if you guys are familiar with Green Onion, you have a cathedral sound here as well. Let's hear that. And you can see I'm controlling the slow and the fast with this little mod wheel here. And that's kind of cool, but you could do a lot of different things with the mod wheel and you can, ex you can control expression, which is going to be volume control, similar to a guitar volume pot on, um, sorry, this is the organ volume control, but it's similar to a guitar volume pot. Um, and that's essentially what it's going to do. It's not going to bring you all the way to zero. And you can get some really expressive sounds like that. If you're not familiar with the B3, it's not going to be um, sensitive to velocity, and that's how you're going to control your velocity. So you've seen our control page, and you've seen the overall page. Let's jump into... Um The next section, I'm going to go into advanced and just show you a couple of things there, and then we'll jump into um, the rest of the signal flow. So we have advanced, and I'm just going to switch between all of these settings so you could hear what they sound like. Uh, I mean, we have all these different sample options for all of the different P3s, um, and you have an A1 here as well, which is very similar, but really cool sound. So all these are going to vary between the samples. So let's hear what they sound like. So you can hear I'm affecting the key click volume on, off. So when you press down and when you let go, and then you're going to have the key click color, which is just going to be kind of the timbre of what it's playing, you know, whether it's going to be leaning bassy or more open sounding. And then you have generator leakage, which you might be considering, why would you ever use that? And it's actually a really cool sound um, that, that the Leslie is known for and the Hammond is known for, sorry. Um, and it can give you some unique, unique sounds. So definitely mess with that guy. Comes out a lot in the DI signal, more so than with everything else going through it because it starts to blend into all the other sounds. But check that out. It's really cool. You have, um, on top of that, some additional percussion sounds. Um, volume compensation, which is going to um, look, in, look in the manual for this one. It's pretty specific. It was on a lot of older organs, and it has to do with the level of the percussion and um, the way that the organ compensates for it. So let's hear what the percussion volume is normally and the, and the decay time. So let's turn all the way up. Let's make sure our percussion's on first, right? Say I didn't hear much. Okay, so very subtle differences here. Um, you can see it was actually on soft, so you might not have heard it as much. We can turn the decay down to slow and we'll go to the third. Subtle, subtle touches there. Um, if you're a very big B B B3 guy, you'd know exactly uh, what you're looking for here and what you want to dial in exactly without even looking. And remember, control click if you guys aren't familiar. We'll bring you guys back to the defaults and save you some time and frustration if you're not too familiar but you were experimenting. So um, outside of here, you have additional chorus controls. Let's turn on the chorus so we can hear that. Um.
And now that was an option on the on, on some older organs. You were able to dial that in, I think, with a uh, resistor or something like that. Um, something really cool that you wouldn't really be able to do as quickly with the, the physical model. Um, and these guys are huge. We had to move one in the office, and they weigh quite a bit. So if you had to get one surfaced, you could imagine it wasn't the easiest thing to do. Um, you do have key split here, which is going to split it from the point of lower and upper that splits at the C3 or whatever note you set. You can click here to change it. And this will allow you to play all three manuals with one keyboard. Or if you want to just play two manuals with one keyboard and then assign the other one to another um, section. I'm going to just stick to one manual right now. And if you look in the settings manual, you're going to see why. Um, my upper manual is going to be for MIDI channel 1. Lower manual is going to be MIDI channel 2. And pedal is going to be MIDI channel 3. Um, all my program changes come through MIDI channel 1. But this just allows me to use all three controllers to control Hammond B3X. We're going to go through that in just a second. Um, you have master pitch here. Let's hear that. So if you have to find the pitch to a song, say the song wasn't recorded perfectly in time, or you want it to just be a little down-tuned to make some weird sounds, this is exactly what you need. Um, you have transpose if you um, need to change keys or anything like that and not worry about it. Pitch bend, it's kind of cool. You could turn this pretty high. Not something you'd do with um, you know, a Leslie, but if you want to make some really cool, weird ambient sounds, you could do that. Uh, so on top of that, you have some MIDI controls. And if you want, right click, you can MIDI learn anything. Um, Leslie Speed is learned to my mod wheel right here, but if I wanted, I could learn that anywhere else. Um, we have the break, which is going to be 93. You can That's going to be what stops the fast speed really quickly, or if you want to stop the slow speed, it stops Leslie completely. It's a really cool little tool. Expression CC11, but you can change all this stuff. They all do set to the Hammond profile with this little power button. So if you have that on, turn it off if you don't use a Hammond. Uh, you could pick through all their different modules, which are really cool. Um, how fast these set up. We had a couple in the office, and it was a breeze to play this thing. I'm not a huge organ player, but it was really fun. Uh, this thing kind of turned me around. So that's our settings menu. Um, now let's go over some signal flow. So you could see right here we have organ stomps cabs and post effects and that's exactly how it flows it goes straight across and let's go into the stop section and you're going to see they have an over scream let's hear how it sounds it's a little abrasive for me i don't particularly love this one but if you want to get some classic rock sounds you can really use that um, it drives into the leslie so it'll give you the distortion spinning um, same thing with the spring reverb Notice the, the reverb spinning, and that's a really cool effect that a lot of people used to really love. And that's why this guy saw it, with the cathedral sound especially. Um, so then you have the EQPG, which can just use UB is to clear up your signal, you know, cut out whatever you don't want, push whatever you do, or give you a little bit of saturation. It's a really cool model. Um, the C1, very famous chorus. I think if we, let's go back to the default preset here, or we'll just go to all draw bars. Let's go to a C major. So you could see that there's chorus and vibrato switching there, and you can turn it on and off. So right now it is on the chorus. So comparable to the other chorus here, but if you want to reach for this one, it's really cool too. Um, this is a very famous chorus. If you're not familiar with it, I'm sure you're going to see it in a lot of different plugins. Um, so the last thing I want to save is the wah. And if you're not familiar with auto wahs, um, one thing you want to do is you want to drive your signal into it. So if you turn this auto depth on at all, we're going to crank it all the way up. And now watch, if I pull this back, it should be shooting up like that. But it's not really pushing too high. Now, let's say I crank this. You see how much more that intensifies? So, um, there is a lot of effect on there. So let's try that one more time. And 
Let's actually go ahead and we'll pick our rock preset. Let's try that one more time. Much nicer, much nicer. And then you could probably even have your drive on here and keep your tone down. So super gritty. Um, there are some Jordan Rudis presets which get really gritty. He's much better at doing that. Um, if you didn't see him perform with um, a very popular band, I'll leave you guys to look it up because I know you're going to want to see what he used Hammond B3X with live and it's going to blow your mind. So check that out. Um, if you haven't heard the news already, it's pretty awesome. I'm sure some of you guys are throwing it in the chat right now. Sorry, I got a little bit of lag here. So the next next thing we have is the cab, and you're going to notice it goes setup, amp, EQ, guitar, amp, and mixer. Pretty much runs through that same same chain, just like you were running right to left. This goes up to down. You could change your mic distance. Um, let's let's reset this. So you can get a little bit farther away, and then there's a less popular 180 degree mic setup. Let's hear the difference. It's supposed to get a little wider. If you're wearing headphones, you might not hear as much as the people who are using monitors right now. So um, you have acceleration, deceleration speed, and how fast the, the fast and slow speeds are. So notice the graphics are reflecting. If I turn that up, it starts to go faster. If I go to the fast speed, I can make it super fast. And same here. And people used to do this by modifying the, the, the motor to make it spin whatever speed in different ways, um, whether it be simple control or whatever. But this is really cool. And the acceleration, deceleration speed is really awesome if you're trying to tune, time it to a track. You know, it's just like a reverb. You can time the way that the Leslie gets to where it needs to be as fast as it can. Um, next thing, I'm not going to go through too many of these, but you have the amps and the cabinets. If you're not familiar with T-Rex and Amplitude, um, Leslie, that's exactly where these are from. And they sound amazing. They sound really cool. Now, a lot of these amp sections are going to sound very similar, but the cabinet sections are where they start to change a lot. So super cool. And then you can go no amp. Uh, the British lead. Ooh, ooh, that was a little hot. Let's, uh, let's crank you down just a little bit on our volume. A little too gritty for me, but um, I'd, I'd prefer just a nice 147. And you have all these nice controls. And you can dial it in perfect for the song. Um, the next thing is an EQ. I'm not going to touch it too much, but you know exactly what this guy does. And you can sweep, cut the highs, the lows, and then focus on something that you want to either boost or cut for the mids. Really awesome tool. Um, you don't have to reach for any other plugins, but essentially what it's for. And that this this next one is the guitar amp, which is a side chain. Um, and if you go to the mixer, you're going to see that it can be enabled, disabled. I'm going to turn that off, turn it all the way down, turn off the DI. So we just hear our Leslie. And we'll put it back to default. Now let's hear the DI. And that's where you start to hear the generator leakage and stuff. And if you've never heard a DI um, Hammond, they do sound really gnarly. And that's why they, they um, sound, uh, that's why a lot of people used to use them is because they sounded so gnarly and the way that you can use that sound because they're not looking for the most pristine, clean sound all the time. But let's check this out, a little bit of mix. All right, so you can see the little thin DI sticks out there a lot, and the generator leakage sticks out there a lot with that guy. Um, you have panning for your different horns, and your, your horn and your, your drum. Um, you can link them together to control the volumes together. They're panned out automatically. And here's our guitar amp. You have the British and the high amp, which if you're not familiar, this is like a high watt, and this is more like a Marshall. Um, so right now it's on mute, but let's hear what it sounds like. Remember, not my favorite sound. But you can blend these together and get a really cool, interesting background tone or a lead sound. So kind of cool. And then you blend in the Leslie, maybe a little bit of DI, and that's why they were cranked down a little bit. And let's try that.
All right, so you probably have to turn them on to hear them, right? Let's try that. So cool, great sounds. And then you have post effects, which um, we're wrapping up here. We're about to give away Hammond B3X, so make sure that you guys have an IK Multimedia account. If you don't, um, go ahead, create one now. I'm going to go through the post effects section. You can come and rewatch this section. Uh, we're going to go through the Black 76, which is going to control our dynamics, and it is an FET style compressor, which is going to be very useful for an aggressive type of compression. And you have this nice little ratio button, which goes to all, which not all compressors do that. You have your attack and your release set pretty much to where you'd, you'd expect them to be for a Hammond. You could turn that off. It's just controlling your dynamics, and let's see if it's doing much. It's already not doing too much. Let's crank this down and hear what it sounds like. Very subtle difference, but you can hear that. Um, and it was really going to control the dynamics in your mix, and that's the whole point. It's not really going to be heard too much dead center as we're listening to it in solo. Uh, those with engineer ears will definitely hear that. Um, you have an EQ81, which is another really sick EQ. Um, a lot of people just use it for the in and out to drive the input a little bit and then crank the output down. <laughs> So it's kind of cool, and then you can switch between all these different things. You can cut off the lows, push a bunch of signals out. Um, this sounds really cool when you're fitting it into a mix. And then you have this nice little reverb module at the end. Let's hear what it sounds like on large. Cool. So you can use this all to fit your sound into the mix. So guys, remember, you don't just have your organ sounds. You don't just have your stomps, your calves. You also have your post effects to fit everything in the mix. And then an overall level control up here. I won't forget about that. You can set him if you're clipping what you really like the sound. Um, depending on how you're clipping, where you're clipping, this might be useful and helpful for you to say. So. Let's go ahead and jump into this giveaway. I want you guys to send your favorite set of samples in the Hammond V3X program. And again, um, if you're not familiar, they're all listed here in the model tab. Uh, if you've never demoed this guy and you've never seen this before, I'm gonna leave it on the screen, but definitely make sure to demo this guy. You get 10 days completely free to see how it is. All you need to do is download the IK product manager and it's a quick, easy, just click to try. So I'm gonna throw your answer in the box. I'm gonna leave, leave the uh, end screen here for a couple of minutes to allow my mod to pick a winner and congratulations to the winner in advance. Um, so remember you guys are winning Hammond B3X, which is an insanely cool uh, virtual instrument. It's the first um, officially licensed B3 for your computer and it's going to be a real blast to really mess with and to have this for complete, to have this completely free. So go ahead and throw your answer in the box. We're going to be picking a winner in just a moment here. Just one more topic here that we actually wanted to cover. I want to go through all of the different MIDI routings. So we're going to just jump into that at the very end. And you're going to look here. We have three different MIDI tracks. Let's go ahead and send them out to our Hammond B3X program. All three of them are going to go to the exact same thing. And the next thing you're going to notice here is track one, track two, and track three. So now if I were to open up Hammond B3X and say press the record arm for three, let's hear what I sound. So really cool, just that's the third manual. Here's the second. All right, so you can see that there. And you can see my last manual right here.
So super, super little intuitive way to use it in the DAW and control all your different performances. And if you don't write organ, you're not an organ player, you can play it part by part by part and really, you know, dissect your MIDI really easily. Um, that in com combination with setting up your MIDI here, just right click and um, you can reset the default, you can MIDI learn. Uh, you're going to have just a super easy time using this in your DAW. Remember, it's all going to come out from one single output, so you can record the audio from this track to another one. Uh, if you don't know how to do that in Ableton, all you would do is create a new audio track. You're going to route the audio in from your Hammond B3X and just go ahead and press record arm. It's going to take all your audio in as long as you're sending signal there and you can record that to a new track. So take all that information, hope that helps, and now let's go ahead and get to that giveaway.